I don't have any preconceptions of what a curator does, what she's supposed to know before she puts up a museum, who is she supposed to know, <coughs> what kind of it, what kind of exhibits and people does she have to deal with. So I don't, I didn't know those things before um, they chose me to be curator. So up to now, I'm always surprised why they trust me. <coughs> so I, I'm here to tell you of the big idea we had in 2007. We're going, we're going to turn 10 years um, in terms of the planning of the museum on March 16. On March 16. So the museum has been open for five years, but we started planning the museum even before that. So what I'm going to tell you may, I hope you may not upset Dr. <laughs> may not upset uh, the whole museum paradigm. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Mamoru Mori. He's a colleague of mine in the Asia Pacific Museum. Uh, and I'm probably going to upset a lot of academics on how uh, we turn science around so that the lady can understand it. So, but it's all in the spirit of reaching out. Because otherwise, why do you have to build museums if you don't want to reach out, if you just want to be in your cubicles and do your research? The whole idea of a museum is to elevate what you already know, so that you can reach out to more people. So, these are not just pretty pictures. Uh, this was the crane in the site of the museum when we were constructing it. I wanted to get people excited because by the time we constructed, we didn't have enough money yet. Tapang lang namin to start it. We didn't have enough money to finish it. But I said, if people knew what we were building, they would support us. So I pleaded with a construction company to please make their crane a dinosaur. So we put a sticker all around the crane so that when it sticks out, when it's doing its work, people will get excited. And they did. The museum cost about a billion pesos. So we had to raise all that money from scratch. Not a single cent from government. All from private donations, individuals and companies. That's also not just a pretty picture. It's one of the first exhibits we had even before the museum was put up. It's a solar tree where you can charge your cell phone. It's now part of our park. So I'm going to give you three essential lessons that I didn't know when we started the museum that we can probably share with you now. As I was just telling, Sel and Kim. My trustees asked me what I wanted to do before we started the museum. I told them I wanted to ask the 100 year old museums around the world that if they had to do it all over again, what mistake will they avoid? That was the one big question I wanted an answer to. Because sobrang kawawa naman natin. Kulelat na nga yung museum. Ngayon lang tayo magkaka-science museum. Mali pa. Diba? So I wanted to harvest that lesson from the ones who have had their museum for a long, long time. And there was one lesson that stood out. I will tell you that later. Uh, but these are essentially the summary of all that one big lesson. First, you have to have a compelling story before you have plans for the building before you have an architect, before you have a team, you have to have a compelling story. What is a compelling story? It's something that moves you, that comes from the passion you have for the field that you're going to build a museum for. And in this instance, it's agricultural, right? For us, it's the public understanding of science in general. So our compelling story was, we were going to tell you that science, the understanding of nature, spans from the smallest of things to the biggest of things and everything in between. From the quarks inside protons to the universe, everything there has something that people are trying to understand. That's our compelling story. We wanted to tell you that the universe is outside you and within you. That's the story we had even before we had money, even before we had an architect, even before we had drawings. We had a story. And for practical reasons, that also saves you a lot of money because your consultants don't have to do that job for you. 
we saved a lot of money because we already had a concept. That's one. And two, if it comes from you, you will be able to sustain it long after you have built the museum and you just have a building. Because that story is the one you would rally day after day when exhibits break down, where you're mad that people are not coming to your museum, when you're so overwhelmed that so many people are coming to your museum. That's the story you will stick to. Number two, work with people, scientists, artists, and fabricators in our, in our case, with whom you sense good chemistry. Because there will never be a shortage of scientists with you, you work with. Them. This, is, this is what you do, right? you know all of them. But not all of them can contribute to a museum. We love them all, right? we love them all. But not all scientists can work in a museum or can work with uh, the project of creating a museum, can work on a project of creating a museum. Artists also, they're really very interesting, but not all of them can stick to a timeline. Not all of them can understand the scientific principle. Because if there's any rule about our exhibits, first, it has to be correct. That is, cannot be compromised. Second, it has to be very clear. And third, it has to be beautiful. If the artists cannot accept that it has to be correct first, then he's out, he or she is out. Say, we really love your work, but if you can't work with a scientist, then we can't accept you in the team. So all 250 exhibits in the museum had a team of a scientist, an artist, and a business manager to keep costs to a budget. Last is you have to have a team who can sustain the passion to run your museum and make it evolve. <coughs> this is so important because once you have built your museum, it will go on forever. And who will make it go on forever? But a team. But the team who's passionate about it are those who are not just forced to work because they can't find other jobs. They have to be so passionate about the museum because museums don't pay a lot of money. NGOs don't pay a lot of money. It's the passion that can sustain this. So if there is anything that we learn, you have to know your why first before your how and what. I'm quite very candid in the way I approach these things. So may, I think this is a good time to also ask yourself, why, why are you building a museum? Why are you reaching out to other people other than the people you reach out to in your ordinary process as circa? Why? Why are you building a museum? For us, it's because we want to provide an extraordinary educational experience that inspires people to understand nature. Because schools don't provide extraordinary learning experience because they, they can't do that. Everyday things, the everyday routine of school can give you chances like that. So we in the museum, we're not a substitute for school, but we elevate. We elevate certain principles in science that we can so that we can supplement the understanding and can bring people to the cusp when there's no turning back. That, ah, I now want to understand and not just accept. That's what we do. We just bring people to the cusp. We don't explain things in great detail. And that's the, that's the work of teachers and parents. Please interrupt me if there's not something you don't understand. I prefer it that way then. So what was our story? So I said, Diba, our story was, I told the trustees, this is my story, I think, because I'm a science writer. This naturally occurs in my head. So every time I look at things, it's just everything from the smallest of things to the biggest of things, before chemistry was even invented, before biology was invented, before physics was invented. This is something that will appeal to everyone. We know small, we know big. We know very small, we know very big. Diba? So I said, we can have the smallest of the biggest and we can organize it this way. We shall do it with what we know, which is science, how we know it, which is the scientific process, what we do with what we know, which is technology. But how are we going to do that? So the first floor, those who have been to the Mind Museum will see the atom, earth, atom, life, earth, and universe gallery. Medyo obvious naman, di ba? It's from the smallest to the biggest of things and everything in between. And then above it, which is Technology Gallery is a physical translation of the principle that without the sciences, there would be no technology. Sciences hold up technology. And the 
and it's how we, it's what we do with what we know. So that's what we, how we organize the museum. And you know what? If you have an organizing principle in the museum, which is as broad as this, you can have any exhibit and stick it in there. Tell me something. Tell me any exhibit that you want to show, and I can tell you where to stick it in there. So if you have a story that's compelling but broad enough, then you don't have to always say, I can be connected to the story. Do we have to build another space for it? So make sure your story is so compelling that you are able to stick it in there, and then years from now, you're able, you'd still be able to have things that you'll see, ah, this is an extension of that story. So that's, our, that's, a, that's the main story we have in the museum. Everyone in the museum knows this by heart, including the guards and the janitors. That's one comment we always get from the museum. Bakit po pati yung janitors nyo at saka yung guards nyo alam? Because we also train them. Di ba ang galing nga nun? Kasi naisip namin, napaka-fake namin if we, our own janitors and guards are not convinced of our own story and don't understand it. If you can't do it to your own people, then fake ka talaga, di ba? So that's the big thing we always get and I'm very, very proud of that. So I told you that. That's our mission. To provide an extraordinary educational experience that inspires people to understand nature. Keyword, understand, not accept. Keyword, knowledge, understanding versus belief. Never ever forget your story. It will be your inspired banner to rally even, even to rally even against, what I mean is against the hardest critic. Always. Anybody who says, eh, but ganyan. Because you say, because this is our story. It doesn't fit our story. So if a creationist comes and says, well, why can't you say that, you know, the earth is only 5,000 years old? Because it's not. Because the story of nature says that from the smallest to the biggest of things, there is a whole natural history behind the earth. And it's not 5,000 years old. That's how you filter. And all academics know that. It's, in your terms, it's called the framework. <laughs> Number two lesson. When you're down to short list of partners to work with, choose chemistry. You will always have someone coming up to you and say, Oh, I'd like to partner with you to, um, for, um, for your, the museum you're building. We'd like to help. So many people would like to help, and that's good. But if you really have to choose, find one you really want to work with. Because you're going to have moments you're going to blow up in smoke and you know, and run out of patience. So it's very good to have people that you really, really like to work with. Because they will always be patient with you and say, ah, oh, she just had a long day. So tomorrow is another day. Because it's going to be a grueling process. So finding new team members who really listen to each other. Google spent millions of dollars trying to study what a perfect team is. Only to find out that the perfect team is the one who listens to each other. It's not the team who's composed of the smartest people. It's not the team who's got the most money. It's not the team with the greatest leader. The perfect team is apparently a team who have people listening to each other. And I'm kind of proud of that, the way we're set up in the museum. I'm, I'm the oldest, so they look up to me just, I think, because of seniority. But they are, they lead their own projects. And Mr. can can attest to their lead their own projects and when they do, I follow them. In a temperamental culture like ours, ano yung Pilipino, mas sentimiento at matampuhin. We're very passionate about what we do. So it's very important that we really feel na feel natin yung katrabaho natin. I cannot overemphasize that point because it is what the wine museum it's how the Mind Museum works up to now. It's how we were able to make it work. We really get along with our partners and with each other. Don't always trust the experts. When we were starting, and we were already a part of the Association of Museums around the world, I would attend the meetings even before construction started, as early as 2007. And they all descended, descended in mass to me, the, the the foreign fabricators, the foreign designers said, no, you're going to invest a billion pesos and you're not going to engage experts, the established experts. First of all, if I engaged all the established experts, 
I will only build a 100 square meter museum because you cannot afford them. You cannot afford them. When I, I had a chart, like, it was really big. And it came up to a trillion pesos already. If I had to get from all of them all the exhibits that we needed to tell our story. So don't always trust them. Because the Mind Museum was not built by museum experts. It was built by people who cared about learning new things and, do, and making use of their craft to build a science museum. So we had, those of you who have moved, who's gone to Pinto Art Museum in Antipolo? Yes. So we, I partnered with the Department of the College of Fine Arts in UP and lots of artist groups. And then I said, let's have science lessons in cafes. So my favorite scientists, I have a few of them, the ones who can really lecture, even artists. We had them in cafes, we had whiteboards in my corners. We had lectures about the 10 most beautiful experiments in science so that artists can connect with the principles. So they did, we did that for a year and a half. We just taught each other. And so from then, we filtered them. We asked artists, so now that you know, so now that you know how Newton even arrived at, the, the, at these principles of gravity, of light, how will you translate that? So they submitted studies, and from the studies, that's how we picked them up. Um, <coughs> from, the, from the sketches that they did. And that's how we came up with about 35 artists we work with. Uh, 35 to 50 artists we work with in the museum. All Filipino, all Filipino artists. So I said, we are on the front and you can't do it. That's how we go, and another one we don't do a museum. So we said, I'm going, look at your artists, right? Receiving 107 million kami sa Pilipinas, wala kami artists. So of course, the whole spawning ground for it is, one of them is the College of Fine Arts in whatever school, right? And I happen to know people in the Fine Arts Department. So I struck a deal with them. We even had their students who are now, you know, famous artists. Because they were school pa lang sila noon when they were doing our exhibits. So they didn't even know what the progress building was. So, so, so progress building sila, may mga pictures sila ng malalaki yung exhibit eh. So the, these kids didn't know what progress building was. And they would ask the mga tao sa kanto sa kalya nila to hold the exhibits and take pictures of the mga nakakubat ng mga tambay. And that's their progress building. Where you work. <laughs> so, see, those of you who know, his name Joe Damag, Joe Damag. Joe yes, he's supposed to do, be a love DJ. Apparently, he's an electronics engineer. He helped a lot. He helped a lot with the exhibit uh, lighting in the museum. And some programmable things. The moon, which is one of the most photographed museum in the uh, exhibits in the museum, is made by a sculptor. A sculptor whose probably monuments you've seen in Ilocos. Iron furniture maker, um, Mike Aguas, you will he's a famous artist in mga puro, ano siya, mga magagandang uh, wrought iron kind of uh, furniture. He did the, for those of you who have been to the museum, the overarching web-like thing near the escalator. That's what he did. Um, the ones who made our Mars exhibit and our other closet exhibits is actually a bus designer. He makes buses. Yeah. So remove your preconceptions about what people can do. Um, not because it's a sexy thing to say, but we proved it. There's evidence. People are capable of so many things, but they have to be inspired. And I think the story of the museum inspired them. Number three, team values. Uh, this is the third very important lesson. These are our three values. Whenever we pick people, we handpick people to join us in the museum. There are only three things that we look for. We look for passion, collaborative spirit and skills, and problem-solving abilities. Because we always have to push the boundaries. We don't do things. We don't copy things. We always have to adapt to changing audiences. That the um, attention span of the panahon ko was like 30 seconds. Now it's only 8 seconds. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to adapt to that. 
And this is my role as curator, since I conceptualized the museum and had to oversee the hundreds of people when we were building. I always just say, just trust your team but carry a whistle. Let them do their thing. You pick them na eh. You pick them and they're good at what they do. Just carry a whistle. Parang, tama na yan. Sobra yan. Okay, yan. Alam mo lang kung kaya mo when to blow the whistle. But let them do their thing because they're good at what they do. Especially the artists. Kayo nila pinapakalimut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bayaan mo lang sila kasi magkukuloy yung exhibit mo. And you know what we did? We put their names in the exhibits para mapahiya sila pag nasira ang exhibit. <laughs> may, may taya sila sa exhibits, even the fabricators. May taya sila. So, mga kamag-anak nila pag pupunta doon, imagine kung nagigiba yung exhibit nila. So, kailangan <laughs> their names are included in the signages of the exhibits. So, this is the museum, based on all those three lessons. Um, this is the building, and that's the part. This entire thing was a product of a story. There was no architecture, zero architectural plan. They asked me for the story. So the story was this. I said, we're going to have the Atom Gallery up to the Technology Gallery. I had a sub-story for each gallery and an exhibit idea for each and every episode of the story in the gallery. Only then did we hire a planner for space planning and only then did we hire an architect. Kag ginawa niyo, kakampi niyo yung architect. So, dalawa kayo. Kami, kami ni Ed Calma, who's a really cool architect. Kalaban namin yung mga engineers pag sinabing, kailangan nyo ba talaga ng light bridge sa loob ng museum? Kailangan talaga ha, ng bridge sa loob. Sabi ko, hindi eh, kailangan kasi parang kung sasabihin nakakonect yung atom sa universe, eh di hindi nakakonect yung dalawa eh. Di ba yun nga yung story, nakakonect sila. So, if they're connected, how do we connect it? And the only physical way to do it is to build a bridge inside the museum. So the engineers were scratching their heads. How do we build a museum? And si Ed Kamupa, he doesn't make an ordinary bridge. He makes a swirling, snaky kind of bridge na each, na hindi siya tuloy-tuloy ah. There are about 200 rings in the museum that we all had to put together because it should look like a wave because of course, energy is a wave, right? And that's the connecting story between the atom and the universe. So we put our foot down and then even if the engineers were pleading with us and they would use things like cost, Ed and I would always be solid saying, no, we need a light bridge. So there's a light bridge in the museum. So every time you see a light bridge in the museum, remember that story now. So we like, engineers done. So all of this was a product of a story. Not a single space there, not a single space it didn't come out of a story. Ed just closed the story and he was glad to do that because that's to them is the ideal thing. Even architects, even architects, even if they want their forms and spectacular shapes to be the showcase, they would want it to tell a story. And since it was, this was a science museum, and it was for there was not science, the story came from us. And he followed it, and the result was this. And at the risk of being, uh, of being yabang, this lesson now is spread throughout the science museum industry around the world, especially when we won the Te Award. Because this kind of story has not happened before. Because this story was conscious, eh, kasi nga, I, I wanted to benefit from the mistakes that they would have wanted to have avoided if they had to do it all over again. Kasi di ba, kulelet na nga tayo, mali pa. Parang sobrang ingin ko naman lang kung so these are the examples. These are actual pictures. And kami lang daw yung museum na mas maganda pa yung totoo sa drawing. Because the drawings, di ba sabi nila, ah, drawing lang yan. Yung drawing ko to, yan. Mas maganda rin yung drawing yan. Kaya nakakatuwa lang kasi when it turned out. Um, we even created our own planetarium because if you know science museum, it costs like a gazillion dollars to build a planetarium. <laughs> so we built our planetarium, and the one who built it is here. <laughs> si, <laughs> si engineer Duque. Yeah, and nako sobrang kung sa akin because I do it over and over and over again. Let's start with orange slices. How you do a circle is with orange slices. And it has to be porous. How do we make it porous? Ang mahala if you have to have it in the all the prefab, we really didn't have money for it. So we asked Uratex who can spray 
inside those orange slices. So I told engineer, gawin mo siyang porous ha, so that sound will be absorbed. It's not your perfect planetarium, but we show the same films that the American Museum of Natural History shows. I get the films from them, and it works. Even the seats are custom built. This is the Hall of Philippines. That's the bridge. That is not an easy bridge to build. This is the Earth Gallery. All these are original concepts because if you give artists your concept, they will run away with it. Just trust them. Pagod na pagod na ako sa metaphor ng Tree of Life. So, ayaw ko na nun. So, ito yung, <laughs> ito yung canopy of life. <laughs> this is, um, we all use the transition spaces to make people understand concepts in between. Like, this is from the Atom Gallery to the Life Gallery. So if you're coming from there, the last exhibit is carbon because we are all carbon-based. That's the unit of life, carbon. So how do particles turn into life? So making use of existing theories and evidence, we, we described, we made exhibits out of the primordial conditions. We end up with a primordial cell. And then when you come out, it's the life gallery. And the first exhibit is DNA. So, Gets you know, I'm not going to die. So you connect it in your head. I love this exhibit. It's so original. And the ones who really get it, I really come down and say, thank you, sir, for getting it. Because I really, 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 really love this exhibit. And one of the ones who made it is an artist na umiiyak talaga sa akin pagka, siko, bakit mo ginawang ganyan? We have to. This was a kid that I told you about. That he was just a student when he was beginning. But now he's a really a famous artist. This is a tunnel craft. This is a transition. Ito yung nakakahilo. May vertigo ka, huwag don't come here. It's a very simple exhibit. So, all the Hubble images are for free, right? So, we printed them on a large, large, large canvas. We put them around this. There's a motor that goes around. Parang mahilo kayo. So, and then, it's like, if you're coming from the, that's the Universe Gallery. Here is the Red Gallery. So, that if you go to the Universe Gallery, it's very like going space travel. Napakasimple lang yan, diba? And then, kids, scream so loudly that we can hear them shout when we're in the office. So we know, oh, without a misplanet. <laughs> That's the light bridge. That's the inside of the light bridge. And that's the drawing. It's exactly the same. Coming so the, the colors are in between because it gets, you know, I know, and this, the visible light is only in the middle. This is the Atom Gallery. Uh, to the agricultural experts who are going to have a hand in the museum, you dig inside yourself on what is the concept in agriculture that you cannot do without. That's the something that I always have to encounter when I was doing this museum. Because when I was explaining this, this is quantum exhibit. This is quantum mechanics. Who cares about it, right? But if you don't care about it, we won't have cell phones. We won't have computers. We had to show it. And then when I try to explain to ours, naluluo ko sila, parang huwag na lang kaya yun. <laughs> or the businessmen in my, in my, in my council. Do we really have to, uh, to have that? It's so difficult to understand. <laughs> but that, no self-respecting physicist will accept an understanding of the universe or anything without the concept of quantum mechanics. So we stuck in there. Inalo kami. So, <laughs> bahala kayo. Mahirap siya intindihan, pero ganyan talaga. Even the physicists, you know, go crazy trying to understand quantum mechanics. They say that if you have understood quantum mechanics, it means you have it. Oh, that's the iron, the rod, iron furniture expert, the, the avenue of life. Because we wanted the connection between the human brain, uh, because you know, what we do with what we know, the human brain is in the life gallery. It's the most complex organ in the universe, the human brain. I haven't seen an alien brain. So for now, it's the human brain. So, so this is how we are able to physically connect the live gallery to upstairs, which is the technology gallery. This is the technology gallery. These are made by the Plastic Modelers Association of the Philippines, whose leader is also based in beauty fine arts. Our concept, we didn't have space to gather, right? Usually it's, how do you talk about the history of transportation? This is not a museum about the history of transportation. But how do, how do we tell that story? We wanted to tell that story that 
in terms of mobility, we went from just figuring out what to put on our feet, which are slippers, and now we've created the International Space Station. So that's the kind of story that moves people. You don't tell them about the kind of models of Mercedes Benz or the kind of models of horse-drawn carriages. It will just be a conglomerate of things, but it doesn't tell a story. So, what could propel you from zero to one in creating a museum? Zero because, come on guys, the Philippines is not exactly known for its science. So basically, it's safe to say that we had zero science and zero money also. Zero budget for anything. We had to do our fundraising and create our own content from zero. And this is what propelled us. Compelling story, partners with whom we have chemistry, and a passionate, collaborative, creative team. So ask yourselves that when you build your own museum. We owe so, many, so much to so many people who taught us this lesson, so we're just paying it forward and sharing it with people <coughs> like you're interested to build your own museum.